I invite you to let your bodies feel centered and held wherever it is that you're seated. Let your eyes close if that feels comfortable or just let your gaze soften. Maybe your hands are open to receive or just palms resting on your legs to let you feel grounded. But let your body come into comfort and ease while still feeling alert and ready. Let the sound of my voice either wash over you, like the sounds of the beautiful music that Pete plays behind me here. Let this, those sounds just wash over you and lead you gently within. Or let them fall away. And let the sound and the sensation of your own breath as you breathe in and out in your body's rhythm. in your rhythm that entrains itself to the rhythm of all of those sitting near you as we enter the quiet. Breathe in. And like the wind blows, let your breath in flow in, breathing out like the wind blows, let your breath flow back out. There's no one you need to be nothing that you need to do but gently breathe. deeper and deeper surrender surrendering the shoulds surrendering perfectionism surrendering our pain surrendering even our joy simply enough to be. Present. Aware. Breathing. Breathing in the breath of God, breathing out the breath of God. Let your awareness come back fully into the room. Maybe feeling 
your grip loosened even a little. So over these past couple of weeks, I've invited us to explore two aspects so far of letting go. What happens in us and as us when we let go of giving as something we do or don't do and instead embrace givingness as the stance and starting point of our divine identity. A way of expressing the divine givingness we are made of. That's one letting go. Last week I invited us to think about how we learn to listen to fear. Let it teach us if it has something to teach us and then to let it go. Transformed through prayer, our fear and our love, transformed through prayer, transformed by presence, transformed by that love, love that calls us into and from the ground of our being into doing love in all actions. So another letting go. So Mary, your, your poem was perfect. When Mary mentioned that was the poem she was going to use this morning, it's already, I have the, a copy of that book too, and it's already dog-eared in my book. And some of that is Lent. It is recognizing the, what Lent meant to me growing up, what, meant, what it meant to me letting go of Lent, and, and then stepping back in to this cycle this rhythm of both nature and the church year and the rhythm of my own life, the times that it has been easy to let something go. Um, I gave a talk a couple of summers ago because I did Google on my Google Drive. How many times have I talked about letting go or release or surrender? It turns out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing because I need the reminders myself. I don't know about you. Um, but that idea of Lent and, and, you know, the little booklet, Letting Go and Letting God. But the, you know, the interesting Valentine's Day, which I wish I had made up. I'd saw that somewhere. <laughs> Those twin things of letting go and letting in. So that's what I found myself this week kind of musing about and wrangling with praying with, the notion of letting go, which Lent, Ash Wednesdays, putting the ashes on the forehead, you know, dust unto dust, and dust unto dust thou shalt go. Giving up shame. Giving up perfectionism. Giving up that voice in my head that says, you're just not doing it right but at the same time really grappling with what Buddhism calls wise remorse. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but we live in a moment in history when the political, economic, and cultural landscape is littered with both individuals and whole systems that do not own up to their wrongdoing. Maybe you've also noticed <laughs> <laughs> that they do not make amends for the violence and harm they cause. Even in the realm of organized religion, from centuries worth of choosing empire over equity to the more recent cover-ups of abuse, the sin on top of the sin is how often victims are made to feel responsible for the harm 
that has been caused to them, that has been done to them. So for part of this week, I was feeling pretty self-righteous about all those sinners. <laughs> oh, I love when I'm hoist with my own petard. The wisdom of 12-step programs teaches us that taking an inventory of how I have hurt others by what I've said, by what I've done, or what I have neglected to do is part of life's healing journey. Owning my shadowy places and making amends are also part of life's healing journey. So how do we move from recognizing our own mistakes into making amends? into a transforming space in our hearts and relationships where there is room for forgiveness and space for doing better, into recognizing that we are not only made of dust of the earth, we are made of stardust. Reverend Kinrai Bessis is the resident monk, and I hope that I have not completely butchered how to say his name, is the resident monk and teacher at the Berkeley Buddhist Priory. In a teaching titled Guilt and Remorse, he says this, Guilt is an example of having a feeling and then giving ourselves bad teaching about that feeling. The arising of guilty feelings is not the problem. It is the deluded meaning we give ourselves about the guilty feeling that is the problem. If you make a mistake, if you did something hurtful to someone, if you did something wrong, it is right and appropriate that you should feel bad about it. In fact, something is wrong when we do not feel bad about our wrong actions and damaging mistakes. Hence those big cultural issues that it's really easy to recognize. Remorse, he writes, is spiritually vital so that we will take our wrong thoughts and actions to heart. We have all had the experience of being with someone who does or says something that hurts our feelings. Even though they may apologize, we can sometimes see that their apology is perfunctory and they do not actually feel bad about what they did. Unless someone feels their mistake, unless they have remorse, the teaching of their wrong behavior has not been fully taken into their heart. This means they are unlikely to change and probably will continue to make the same kind of mistake in the future. So maybe you can see why I was feeling a little self-righteous this week. As I thought about every person in my own life and every system that I already mentioned that I don't really have to go into detail about, those people who are not taking their lessons into their own hearts and so they're never going to change. Mm. The note I wrote on my page here is, oi. <laughs> How do we refrain from leaning into both self-righteous judgments and finger-pointing that it was really easy for me to do, but also into self-recrimination and shame and staying stuck in our own egoic minds. That is also as unhealthy as not owning our mistakes, is only seeing where we have failed, only seeing where we have let someone down. If we're locked into thinking, I have to be perfect in order to be loved, we are not honoring the gift of God that we are. 
if we never admit that we have fumbled and hurt someone, there's never space for healing. So how do we do it? We spend time with God. We spend time in the quiet, experiencing the infinite presence of God as principle, God beyond us. We spend time in the quiet, experiencing being held in the arms of the beloved, God beside us. We spend time in the quiet, experiencing the whispering voice of God within, God being us. I did not make up those terms. That'll be next week's talk because these three faces of God, when we let go of our small s selves and live in and from the truth of our interbeingness with God who is everywhere, God who is beside and within us, when we live from that truth, only then are we able to transform all that we are? I'm just saying, all that I am, all that I am, I give to you. When we spend that time, we transform. And then we live from that transformed space into all we're called to be. It's an inside job. And it's a job that we need to do in community. So I'm going to read a little bit of something I shared on Wednesday during that meditation. It's called A Letter from God to Her Daughters Who Observe Lent, and it, it starts about Ash Wednesday. But I've, I've taken some liberties with it and adapted it slightly because we all need that reminder. Daughters, sons they, them, we. And so this, I think, is a letter from God beside us. God the Beloved talking to us. Dear one, let me be very clear about this at the outset. I love you so much. I delight in you. I cherish you forever. Here are a few more things I want you to comprehend. Despite what you've been taught, holy does not mean pure and unearthly. Sin does not mean breaking my rules and making me mad. Penitence does not mean li listing and wallowing in all the ways you're wrong and bad. Repentance does not mean promising to do better by staying out of trouble. What if you only sin, God says to us, when you refuse healing and cling to brokenness, when you use those sharp edges to hurt yourself and others? What if holiness is when you choose to be whole even though you're terrified? when you embrace and enfold those pieces of yourself you're, you've lopped off to fit into others' molds? What if penitence is when you see yourself clearly? And I would say that is knowing our shadow and our shine. What if penitence is when you see yourself clearly and know, speak, and live from your heart? What if repentance is remembering your true self in all your messy glory? What if this Lent, instead of focusing on the ways you're not good enough and the ways you fall short, you commit to your own healing? When you let yourself be healed, your healing heals the world. 
me say that line from God to us again. When you let yourself be healed, your healing heals the world. And when you cling to your brokenness, the world stays a little more broken than it needs to be. Your healing is crucial. Your healing is the crux where you and I come together. This Lent makes space for me to flow into you and through you and as you. Sweetheart, God goes on to say to us, sweetheart, healing isn't complicated. It's always available. All you have to do is tap into it like a maple tree in springtime or an aquifer of living water. You know this, but it's so easy to forget. Relax your heart armor just a little and allow yourself to flow, child. That's all you have to do. I'll do the rest. You're the only you I created. So please, let yourself be the creation I made you to be. Trust yourself. Trust your heart. Trust me. I've got you. All my love, God. So I'm going to give us the same assignment. I'll put that. I'll actually put the whole version up on the website. Well, I say I, but I'll send it to our incredible Roger, and he'll put it up. <laughs> I'll give you the same assignment I gave us on Wednesday night. And that is to write a love letter to you from God. Not to God. We write our letters to God at Burning Bowl. It's a beautiful practice to then receive that in November and see what we had on our minds. Write from the voice of the beloved to yourself. Spend time with those three faces of God. Feel the immensity of God, the infinite presence of God that we tap into in meditation. Feel that intimate, beloved friend that we pray to. And that's okay. Spend that time listening to God within. And let that be part of your Lenten journey. Spend time in the quiet of your own house. The house that we build in that beautiful poem that Mary shared that I'll also put on the website. Listen to God speaking to your own heart. Where is God inviting? Always, always inviting, never demanding. Inviting you to let yourself be transformed. The crux of your healing is where you come together with the Holy One, the crux of our healing is where we come together with the Holy One. The crux of the world's healing is where we come together with the Holy One. So write that love letter to yourself and read it. Maybe in the morning over your cup of tea or coffee, Read it before you go to bed at night. Add a P.S. if you think of something else God wanted to tell you. God's really informal when writing. It's, it's awesome. Let your wise remorse, your wise forgiveness, your wise joy, your wise gratefulness lead to your wise healing. And then bring that healing to the world. And so it is. 
Amen.